Hello, YouTubers. This is the Nubifier. It's a very special Friday where we have a Spectrum AMA, which is short for Ask Me Anything, directed to none other than Chris Roberts, founder and CEO, Todd Pappy, Star Citizen Live Director, and Tony Zervik, or Tony Z, Persistent Universe Game Director. There were some rules for this AMA. No questions on timelines or schedules, no questions about the revised roadmap, and questions should be about systems and features that are available now or have been spoken about. This is a big one, so get comfortable. Here's what you need to know in five minutes and 30 seconds. Todd said that they have plans to prevent random AI from appearing in the middle of nowhere once some more work is done to the planetary nav mesh. Updated transition animations are also gonna be worked on, allowing NPCs to transition from ship to surface easily. And this tech will also be applied to creatures like the space cow. Todd confirmed that Theaters of War is still coming and at the right time, we will get an update. Chris confirmed that we're getting a Calling All Devs episode devoted to discussing the death of a Spaceman implementation with Richard Tyrer. This will also touch on future medical gameplay as they're quite tied together. Todd was asked about NPC crew gameplay. He confirmed that they still need to flesh out the player functionality so that those could be automated. He said that the roles will define behavior such as captain, engineer, and turret gunner. Then they can apply the required automatic behaviors. He then went on to say that there also needs to be a way for players to give commands, so we also need a working interface for this. Todd was asked about computer blades and the future advanced features that those will offer. He said they're toying with the idea of having a two-part system, hardware and software. He posted 17 items on a list. I'll summarize. A blade for automated countermeasure systems, a blade to encrypt and decrypt data to adjust ship power systems, offensive and defensive e-war, mining and salvage scanning blades, a blade that can track bounty and targets, a blade to help you plot a route, a blade that'll help you scan jump points, a trade blade <laughs> that would plan trades while on the move. There would be one that could balance shields, one that could help smuggling by masking your cargo, targeting individual parts of a ship would be assisted by a targeting blade, and there would be a blade to manage drones. Tony spoke about blockers and milestones for improving dynamic missions. He said that the UI and logic aren't there yet, and this is why some advanced service beacons are halted as well. As Quantum is added, it'll bring with it all of the backend systems, which will allow for more work on the missions and events. Tony was then asked specifically about Quantum, saying that time was being invested to optimize the simulation and work was being done with as many as 2 million quanta. He said that they found a very nice balance with only using 100,000 per system, and that they would drive such things as repair prices, encounter types, and have a dramatic effect on the player gameplay experience. Tony was asked about future mechanics, specifically bounty hunting, and he did say that he is most interested in improving these missions. Current missions are about fighting someone somewhere, but they do plan to add enhancements to the missions so that they offer a deeper challenge. He confirmed that bounty will likely be the first implementation of the virtual NPC along with custom UI that allows the hunters to register and receive additional info on that mark. He indicated that that info would likely come from the control towers and the comms array traffic. Todd was asked about the universe and what systems we might expect at launch. He replied what we've heard before, that the tooling is needed before he can really ramp up the production, which does make sense. Time invested in that tooling, textures, asset packs will eventually allow them to drop in complete systems all at once. Chris announced there will be a new quarterly show called Briefing Room about Squadron 42 development. He said he was happy with the progress being made on the updated roadmap. Chris said that he does not agree with some comments that he's been reading that transparency and communication have been slow lately by highlighting that not all information comes out in a show or a roadmap. He confirmed that he believes that CIG is still meeting the Pledge of Transparency, but then he said he knows that they can always do better, which is why they plan to publish this new show. Todd said that data gameplay is still a priority, but they wanted to finish cargo, specifically big cargo first. He then answered another question about NPCs being able to go to and from the surface from ships. That was demoed last year at CitizenCon, and he confirmed that there are still a couple bugs that need to be addressed. Tony said that they would like to add more dynamic events like Fleet Week in the future. He said that these temporary events can be built up as a library and then added in to break up the routine. Todd explained that the risk of repetitive missions can be reduced with a modifier such as changing the package to a hostage, changing the box to a volatile box, and other basic changes. Chris then spoke about base building, but he began by saying that eye cache and persistence is critical first. Chris said that the original plan did not include the level of fidelity that the team is able to produce now, specifying that it won't just be a big building plunked down and that the base will have a lot more variation. He said that the Pioneer will prove to be a vital ship to populate areas with very little traffic. 
Todd then spoke about the room atmosphere system, specifically the pipes and systems. He confirmed that if the system was damaged, it would compromise the functionality of the room, just like it would on a ship or a space station. Tony confirmed that pyro and server meshing were planned to be released together. He also confirmed that manually loading and unloading cargo is a planned feature, however, some revisions to the grid system would be needed. Jonas chirped on Chris a little bit for not answering questions having to do with dates and times. He pointed out the importance of the optics of meeting deadlines and setting goals. Chris did a double down similar to his previous question and answer session from a couple weeks ago, proclaiming that it was not a matter of when it would be done as much as the fact that it needed to be done correctly. Chris basically said that he would not be rushed into releasing a subpar product. He said that the new updated roadmap would clearly indicate the progress and having been burnt by dates in the past, the roadmap is his way forward. And he did say there was, and I quote, a ways to go before we're in beta. We can assume that he means Squadron 42 because we know that that's first. And that's it. There were over 600 posts and by my count, 16 or 17 detailed answers from the team. I waited an additional 45 minutes to make sure that the AMA concluded. Thank you very much for spending your time with me. Fly safe and I'll see you in the verse. <laughs>